Hello Nidorinos and Nidorinos and welcome to Raspberry City where the Raspberry Rockies are going to be hosting their rivals today, the Viridian Fissure, because this is the rivalry round. And the Fissure are going to start out big with their pseudo-legendary Garchomp and Golurk, which the Raspberry Rockies are going to start out with Kabutops and Gigalith. Now let us know in the comments below who you think is going to win today, the Rockies or the Fissure. Now Garchomp's going to start out with that speed advantage, massive speed of 102. The pseudo-legendary is going to go with the Accelerock. Targeting Kabutops doesn't do a great deal of damage, but Kabutops' weak armor is going to lower its defense, boost that speed stat, so you have to think Kabutops will be going second, potentially going first in the next turn. Now Kabutops is going to go with a Shell Side Arm, going for that Poison type move. Now, a decent hit on Garchomp, but it does not leave it poisoned. Oh wait, yes it does, I apologize, it does leave it poisoned. That is fantastic, that is exactly what Kabutops needed. Targeting the Pseudo Legendary, leaving it poisoned. As Golurk goes with a Dragon Breath. Targeting Gigalith, who had a very impressive performance last week, and Gigalith is now left paralyzed. So already we have two status conditions in this battle, and the first turn isn't even over. As Gigalith goes with a Dragon Tail onto Garchomp, super effective, but it's going to send Garchomp back into the party. So don't be confused, Garchomp is not eliminated, it's just on the bench as Swampert comes out onto the field for the Viridian Fissure. Now as always, this is a 6 on 6 metronome battle, and if we hit that 20 minute time limit, we will go into single battle overtime. Now Kabutops is the quickest on the field, for sure, as I said, Garchomp has left the field, and it's going to go with a Skitter Smack, welcoming Swampert to the battlefield. It's also going to lower Swampert's special attack in the process, who has an opportunity now to respond. And it's going to go with a Sludge Wave. So a poison type move of its own. And it hits everybody on the field, but not very effective on Golurk, who is left poisoned by its own teammate. That's terrible for the Viridian Fissure. Golurk now with its chance, and it's gonna go with a power trick. So it doesn't go for an offensive type attack, instead, it's just gonna be switching its attack and defense stats with that attack of 124. And a defensive at 80, so it's now become a defensive type Pokemon as Gigalith goes with a freeze dry, targeting Swampert, and a massive hit taking Swampert straight down into the red with that super effective move. There's that poison and impact in Golurk. So Golurk's actually the second Pokemon on the Fissure today to be poisoned because Garchomp still has its poisoning as it waits on the bench. Kabutops now is going to go with a focus energy, so it's only going to boost its stats. There it is getting pumped. Now Swamp It with its chance. And it's going to go with a Searing Shot. So this won't be very effective. But again, it hits everyone on the field. And now Kabutops is burned. So the fourth Pokemon in this battle has been left with a status condition. Three of the four on the field at the moment. As Gullet goes with a Discharge, this would have hit everyone on the field as well. But Swamp It's immune. But it eliminates... Kabutops with a super effective critical hit, so that burn's never even going to take effect because Kabutops is eliminated as Gigalith has its opportunity to avenge its teammate. And it's going to go with a Shadow Bone. Surely it's going to want to target Golurk with a super effective move and a massive hit onto Golurk, taking it down into the yellow, and that poisoning takes it down even further into the red as we're going to have the third Pokemon for the Raspberry Rockies come out onto the field. Now the rivalry for these two teams Oh, as our Maldo comes out for the Raspberry Rockies, it's born out of the fact that they are so commonly confused with what each other's type is, and that spread of rivalry between the two teams, which neither appreciated as Swampert is going to go with a Zing Zap, targeting Gigalith, gets a decent hit, taking Gigalith down into the red, but that super, uh, sorry, with that critical hit, not super effective move. Uh, and now we get a Fissure coming from Golic, and it's going to hit. And for the first time ever in the Elite Challenge League, we have seen a Fissure connect. It is a one-hit KO, and the Fissure hit the first Fissure. That is so ironic. Unbelievable, though. Well done by Golok to land that move. As Almaldo goes with a Swagger. It's going to boost that attack there of Swampert, but it's going to leave it confused, so Swampert needs to capitalize, not do any damage to itself. As Golok is hit by that poison again. And it is eliminated by that poison after hitting an amazing fissure attack. I cannot believe we finally saw that in the Elite Challenge League. That is fantastic as Garchomp comes back onto the field, who is also poisoned. And it will be met by a pseudo-legendary also as Tyranitar comes out for the Rustboro Rockies. 
Now, last time these two teams met in round three, the Rockies did win six to four, and they're gonna wanna look to repeat that today. But at the moment, they are behind as Garchomp goes with a Rock Blast, targeting Tyranitar. Multi-hit move, it's got two. There's three. It's got four. And it gets five, it's a five-time Rock Blast. As Tyranitar now looks to respond. And it's gonna go with a Water Pulse. Now, this would usually be super effective. But Garchomp being part dragon helps it resist, and it wouldn't have even been super effective on Swampert due to its water typing. Now Swampert shakes off that confusion, and it's going to go with the Steel Roller, but it fails, unfortunately, for the Rudian Fissure. Armaldo has the potential to finish off either Pokemon, but instead goes with a double team. So it's going to boost its evasiveness. And there's Garchomp taking more poisoning damage, taking it down into the red, unfortunately, as Swampert and Garchomp both wait in the red at the moment. Now Garchomp goes with a Psychic Attack, but it doesn't affect Tyranitar thank to, thanks to its Dark Typing. Now Tyranitar goes with the Psych Up. So it's not going for an offensive type attack, just copies the status changes of Swampert, so it actually boosts its attack, and Swampert again shakes off that confusion. Goes with a flash cannon, and again, it is avoided. Armado avoids that attack. So Swampert just can't land these steel type moves. As Armado goes with a water spout, this will hit both Swampert and Garchomp, and it finishes both of them off. And not even being super effective on the ground type Pokemon, but it still eliminates them as the Rustbow Rockies now take the lead with that double elimination. So there's going to be two Pokemon now coming out for the Viridian Fissure. As the Fissure have their game plan, they decide to send out her Powdon. And they're going to join it with another Dragon type Flygon coming out. And there's a Sandstream started up by her Powdon's ability, but no one on the field is going to be taking any damage from that Sandstream. The Flygon being the quickest on the field has a 100th base speed. It's going to go with a Magic Coat, so it's not going to start off with an offensive type attack. Now Tyranitar is going to go with a Muddy Water now. This will be super effective on her Powdon. Goes for the two Pokemon hit. And even gets a good hit there on Flygon. Her Powdon now has its opportunity to respond to that. And it's going to go with a Yawn. So it's going to look to put Amado to sleep at the end of the next turn. Amado needs to capitalize here. Before it get, falls asleep. And it goes with a Volt Switch. But it doesn't affect the ground types. So Armado will stay on the battlefield, but did try to avoid that going to sleep. Flygon now. Gonna go with a Land's Wrath. A massive hit this should be. Taking Tyranitar down into the red who just holds on. But it hits both Armado and Tyranitar with that attack. And Tyranitar responds with a bite. And it's a massive hit on Flygon, and Flygon is eliminated with that bite. After Tyranitar, thankfully had that attack stat boosted thanks to copying Swampert's stat changes. A Powder now goes with a Grouse. It doesn't go for an offensive move. Instead, it's going to lower the attacks at both Armaldo and Tyranitar. As Rustbow Rockies have built some massive momentum at the moment in this battle, Armaldo is going to go with an Iron Defense. It boosts its defenses as we will shortly be having the last Pokemon for the Viridian Vision come out onto the field. And there it is, Armado's been put to sleep after that yawn in the previous turn from her power bomb. And we have Sandaconda coming out for the Viridium Fissure. Now the Fissure is sitting 16th, they've had a really poor season. They need to get this, stop this momentum that Rustboro Rockies are building in this battle. They want this victory, they need it. As we get a Blaze Kick coming from Sandaconda onto Armado. Thankfully Armado is Rock type and prevents it being super effective on its other type being Bug. Tyranitar sets up the Wonder Room, so it's going to switch everyone's defense and special defense stats. Now her Powered On goes with a Sludge Attack. And it will target Tyranitar and finish it off, so Tyranitar has been eliminated. That is fantastic. This is exactly what the Fissure need. They are only one Pokemon behind, as Armada is still asleep. 
So we're going to have the fifth Pokemon coming out for the Raspberry Rockies, and it's Amistar coming out, the Water Rock type. And the Raspberry Rockies are sitting eighth, so they are just within the eight. They want the victory today to try and make themselves safer in that top eight, try and even inch their way up to the top four if they can, as they're trying to climb higher up this ladder. Sandaconda with the speed advantage goes with the Supersonic. So Armado now has been confused. Amistar. Now if it goes for some water type attacks, it will be super effective, but instead goes for a U-turn on her Powdon. So it takes a Powdon down into the yellow and Amistar returns to the bench. As we're gonna have Aurorus come out for the Raspberry Rockies. And Aurorus is gonna change that Sandstream with its snow warning, so it started to hail. So everyone but Aurorus on the battlefield will be taking damage in between turns from that. As we get a Spark Lunaria coming from her Powdon, it'll hit everyone on the field, but Aurorus avoids it. And it's super effective actually on Sandaconda. And there's that hail taking effect on everyone on the field, but Aurorus. Now, Amaldo needs to wake up. It is confused, so it needs to shake that off as well, but it needs to wake up and become productive in this battle. Sandaconda is going to go with a Swift now. It's going to hit both Aurorus and Armaldo. So chipping away with those offensive moves wasn't very effective, but it still gets that offense out. Aurorus now is going to go with a Growth. So instead of looking to attack, it's going to boost its own stats here, raising that attack stat and its special attack. Her power on. Goes with a Searing Shot. So this hits everybody on the field, takes Almodo down into the red, and Santa Conda even goes into the yellow with that, and Almodo is still asleep as everyone again gets hit by that hail on the battlefield. Now as always, in our description below, we do have a link to our Instagram page where you can get fixture and ladder updates as well as our match of the week. As everyone prepares for their turn, Santa Conda again still with that speed advantage, and it's going to go with a Shadow Punch. Targeting Aurorus here, and takes Aurorus down in the red. This is exactly what the Viridian Fissure need to do. They've got the Respire Rockies, two of their Pokemon in the red, as Aurorus sets up a Hex, and it's going to target her Powdon here. Also taking her Powdon down into the red, so everybody's been taken down. They're hanging in there though. Her Powdon is going to go with a Metal Burst, has the potential to finish off a Raspberry Rocky Pokemon, and it goes for Aurorus, and it will. Aurorus has been eliminated from this match. So we know that Amistar will be coming back onto the field as Armaldo wakes up and it shakes off its confusion as well. And it's going to go with a Feralox, so it doesn't go for an offensive type attack, but it is 2v2, anybody's game at the moment. And again, there's that hail doing damage to everyone on the field. Her Powdon does hold on just. Armaldo should do the same, barely, but if Her Powdon or Armaldo take any damage, you have to think they're going to be eliminated. As Amistar comes back onto the field, the only Pokemon with full health, as everyone else is below 50%, but Santa Conda still with that speed advantage. It just takes a grass type move to do massive damage to Amistar, but Santa Conda goes for a tea time, so everyone's having their berries, preparing for that last final bit of action. As everyone eats that Leper Berry, because everybody in the Elite Challenge League holds a Leper Berry to potentially potentially add a few extra moves to their metronome if the battle requires it. It's very rare that we actually see someone need it though, as Amistar now goes for a Cotton Guard. So it's just looking to boost its stat own stats. Powered on now, needs to target Armada, prevent it from getting an attack in this turn, and it goes with a quick attack, but Armada avoids it. Armada Needs to shake off this confusion, but it doesn't, so Amado ends up eliminating itself anyway. So the Rudy and Fissure have taken the lead. And Amistar is the only one left for the Raspberry Rockies, as everyone takes damage from that hail. And the hail actually finishes her power on off. So Aurorus' hail has come back to help out the Raspberry Rockies. So Amistar, Sandaconda, the last two Pokemon left. Sandaconda with the speed advantage. Amistar has more health left though. Sandaconda goes with a confusion. So it is going for offensive type attacks. This is exactly what it needs to do. Chip away at Amistar, potentially get some big hits in. Amistar now with its chance to respond and it's gonna go with a Skull Bash. So Amistar is gonna 
tuck its head in on this turn, boost its defense, and it should get in a massive hit on the next turn, which means Sandaconda needs to go for something now, as that hail has finally stopped. So the battlefield clears up. Sandaconda needs to go for something big here. Otherwise, it could potentially be eliminated by Omastar. And it's going to go with a Bug Bite. I do not think this will get the job done. And it barely does any damage. But Omastar's weak armor will lower its defense. But this could actually benefit the Rockies. Because Omastar's speed will be boosted. It will potentially go before Sandaconda if it needs to. But it won't need to because it finishes the job with that Skull Bash. Sandaconda is eliminated. And the Rustboro Rockies beat the Rooting Fisher for the second time this season. That is exactly what they wanted. Massive start for them. That very impressive performance by Golok as well in it. A ability to get out that fissure. Here it is. Just taking Gigalith straight out of this battle. As Gigalith had an amazing performance last week. But we saw a fissure for the first time ever. As I said, very ironic that the fissure connected with the first ever fissure in the Elite Challenge League. Unbelievable that that would actually happen. But it did right here today. Fantastic though. Unfortunately, the Rudian Fisher could not hold on and win this, which they desperately need. They've won two games this season, and today was not their third. Whereas the Raspberry Rockies trying to inch their way higher into the eight. This has to help them potentially. This could be very big. They get the victory. And next week, they're going to be hosting the Verbank Venom, who have been sitting around that top five. So it should be a very good matchup between the Raspberry Rockies and the Verbank Venom. Whereas the Viridian Fisher just cannot get a victory as they struggle through this season. But next week, they're going to face the Snowpoint Frost, who have actually been doing worse than the Viridian Fisher have so far this season. So that'll be a battle of two very lower tier teams. But Omnistar finishing it off with that Skull Bash, getting the Rockies the win that they needed, helping them this season. But as always, Nidorinos, Nidorinos, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below who you thought was best on field. Always remember, you are awesome, and I will speak to you next time.